another beautiful day in the woods. Um, I'm here at, today at uh, Glen Sebastian Nature Trail, which is located on the University of South Alabama in uh, Mobile, Alabama. Um, this is a uh, basically a this is a preserve. Um, um, I will leave a, a link down in the, uh, the description uh, to uh, this area if uh, you're interested in that. But the focus today is going to be on close-up and macro photography. Uh, I just uh, decided to take uh, just a quick hike uh, today and I'm just looking for uh, subjects that I could use uh, with a uh, medium zoom lens that uh, is basically macro capable and then a dedicated 100 millimeter macro uh, lens. Um, so I was over here just uh, actually looking at some water lilies and a little uh, retention area. Well, it's uh, uh, a pond over this side, but on that side over there, it's actually a huge uh, lake um, that uh, but the water level is really low. Um, it's just covered with uh, these uh, water lilies. But uh, for the subject at hand, I came across, I was trying to get a good angle to get a shot of this uh, little pond area here. And coming uh, back through the woods, I've noticed uh, this log down here, and it's got. Uh, you know, one of these fan type of mushrooms. And I thought it would be actually a, uh, a first uh, subject for uh, doing a, uh, a macro close-up photography. Uh, of course, one of the questions that's always asked, what's the difference between close-up and macro? Um, I'm, I don't know if there's actually a scientific explanation uh, of uh, what that is. I think a lot of times photographers will use close-up macro uh, photography interchangeably. Um, some of them will say, well, it deals with the magnification. Uh, for me, uh, personally, when I look at close-up photography, I'm thinking of taking a normal lens and using that to get a, a close-up of a subject. Um, to me, macro would be anything from uh, a magnification of one to one or greater. Um, now that can be accomplished various means by using a dedicated macro lens to uh, screw on uh, filters that uh, will uh, give your existing lens closer focus uh, or, close, or actually larger magnification, uh, enable them to uh, focus closer uh, or you could use uh, extension tubes uh, which I've used uh, for a long time uh, using an existing let's say a 50 millimeter or a uh, uh, 135 and using uh, the uh, extension tubes to get really uh, sometimes even to micro photography but uh, for the most part uh, I use a, uh, uh, like I said, a, a medium range telephoto, which what I've got right now is a, uh, a 17 to 70. Um, and I've also got a dedicated uh, 100 millimeter uh, f2.8 macro lens uh, that I pretty much use for getting things really close up. But uh, I will show you this in a minute here, but when I've come across this subject here, uh, I'm going to actually use my uh, short telephoto uh, to actually get into this and I'll also go ahead and use the macro lens so you can actually see, you know, at least for this uh, first subject to get a difference between actually using um, a medium telephoto uh, lens to get a close-up versus actually using a dedicated macro lens. This is the subject. I'm going to take it from this way. Mostly when I'm looking at uh, um, shots like this is uh, not only is it the subject matter, but also the way the light is falling in, uh, on it. And I like the way that we've got the sun coming through the trees this way. That's the lighting. This, so you can see where my um, shadow is. 
So that gives you a really good idea of how the uh, sun is following this. Um, I just like actually the way the pine cone has uh, kind of tucked underneath there and this log is going across like this. Um, so we'll go ahead and take some uh, shots and see how it comes out. The meter reading on this for uh, this shot is showing uh, at f8 at uh, 1 25th of a second. So because of it's so slow, uh, this is not able to be handheld. So I've elected to go with uh, setting up a tripod here and then we'll get the camera set up for that and then uh, take our uh, shots from there. It's got a spotlight on this uh, mushroom in the cone on this log right here. Um, so uh, I've already readjusted the uh, camera. So um, it went up actually to one three uh, twenty of a second um, with that spotlight, and I'm exposing for the uh, uh, the brightness of the mushroom itself. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, use the self timer on this. This will help prevent any uh, uh, camera shake. Um, and we'll go ahead and take some shots. Sometimes you just got to get lucky with uh, uh, the way that the sun has uh, been uh, in and out uh, on this. So take uh, several shots of it and then uh, hopefully we'll come out with a, uh, a good one. I like the way this has uh, come out, so what I'm going to do now is uh, go ahead and swap out the uh, uh, the uh, the lens here, the 70 to uh, the 17 to 70, and I'm now going to go ahead and put on the 100 uh, macro lens and uh, see what we can get as far as uh, with the way the sun is playing spe uh, specifically on the mushroom. Um, I'm going to try to go ahead and get some of the the ridges and the uh, uh, the way that uh, uh, this mushroom starts out from the middle and fans out um, with the, the detail in it. What's interesting is when you're doing close-up macro photography is that with you find one subject depending on the angle that you use the way the light is uh, uh, hitting the subject um, you can get multiple different shots from one subject just by exploring the different angles that uh, are possible within the shot from this shot here again I'm using a uh, 100 uh, millimeter f.2 uh, macro lens and I'm focusing on the part of the top ridge of this mushroom and how it's got the bands of color and then the details in all the ridges of the uh, the mushroom itself test shot and because especially one of the things that you deal with when you're doing uh, close-up macro photography is the lack of uh, depth of field. So to increase the depth of field, I'm now using um, F16. Um, the shutter speed is an eighth of a second and also is keeping it at uh, ISO 100.
Okay, so the way I've got this now, it's actually focusing with this lens. As you can see, I'm using a flashlight here to put light underneath the uh, mushroom. And I guess it might be a seed pod or something like that. But um, so I've got the setting set on this right now as F14. Uh, one eighth of a second at uh, ISO 100 and take our test shot. Let's redo the focus. Okay, it looks really good. The uh, histogram is good. We're looking uh, really, really good on there. Uh, so I have this set uh, again on manual and uh, looks like it came out really well. When it comes to close-up macro photography, one thing that, like I said, you are always looking for are patterns. Um, whether you're looking to take a full branch of flowers, you're going down to that one flower, you're going down to one petal, or you're focusing in on the, uh, the middle of the flower. What you're looking for are patterns that are interesting to you. Um, also, you're looking for subject isolation. So, when you're focusing in on a flower or that insect, you're obviously dealing with very short depth of field so you're dealing with usually a, a small f-stop and obviously a very small shutter speed when you're in a in a room or your house and you're setting up some i guess you could call them still lifes or anything like that you have complete control over what you're shooting when it comes to close-up and macro photography out in nature itself, you're at the uh, subject of uh, Mother Nature and how she, see, feels, she sees fit to give you the sun. Um, but that should not ever stop you because some close-ups that are actually done within shade or uh, or a dark can actually introduce a lot of mood to a photograph. Um, and so you saw me use the macro lens and a, uh, sh a small, or I, I, I consider a short telephoto lens. So you can see the differences in the uh, 
type of photographs that you're going to get. With uh, that dedicated macro lens, you can see that gets me really in, and that gives me uh, a one-to-one -one or greater uh, shot of uh, what I'm shooting for. Um, with the short telephoto, I can pull back, I can go in, um, and that right there helps frame the shot. So, you know, when you're using a macro lens, you got to kind of have the forefront to know exactly what you're looking for. Um, and always, you know, when you're making your test shot is to look in your viewfinder and, you know, make sure your framing is uh, what you're looking for. Um, and like I said, a lot of subjects, just uh, moving the camera around, uh, going up, maybe going down to ground level as you saw that I did, um, gives you a completely different uh, um, scene uh, on the subject. So um, whether you know, you're out on the trail that I'm, I'm on today or you're just right in your backyard, um, when you go, decide to do any uh, macro or close-up photography, um, it's almost an unlimited uh, supply of subjects, you know, that you can find right around uh, where you live or when you're out on a nature hike. Another good thing about uh, close-up and macro photography, it really doesn't matter what time of the day you decide to do it. Because um, right now it's about one o'clock here, so the sun is over its uh, apex and getting a lot of shadows and uh, highlights coming through here. Leads to some very interesting uh, light and uh, shadow patterns. Um, but uh, whether it's moss on a tree, um, a mushroom, whether it's uh, a configuration uh, like a pattern that you see in a bark, um, as you saw that I did with uh, just a simple flashlight to light underneath that mushroom, you can do it any time of the day. Like, but you don't have, obviously, the full control of the lighting that you would have if you're doing a macro or close-up in your house but uh, um, you can use a, a flash and a flashlight or something like that as a good fill-in so you never know what you're going to come across looking at some of these uh, low-lying low leaves along here and I kind of like the way that the Sun is playing on some of these leaves so I think that is my next subject I'll take a break here. Uh, I don't know if I uh, said yet. Uh, sometimes I say it multiple times on a uh, video. It is a beautiful day today. I uh, made a special request last night to Mother Nature asking uh, her to give me a, uh, a day that's uh, in the mid 70s. Uh, Carolina bloom skies and uh, just a uh, whist breeze to uh, uh, keep the heat off my back and she came through plus uh, it's just great so uh, this is turning out to be a, a nice little walk through this uh, uh, nature trail and uh, I'm finding plenty of subjects uh, as far as uh, for close-up in macro photography 
So far, uh, I think I've been very successful. Um, the day is uh, still uh, got plenty of uh, light left. It's going strong, and I'm hoping to uh, um, get uh, more and more as the uh, the day goes by. So, till then, I'm just going to enjoy some uh, lunch, and we'll get back on it. how this uh, comes out when uh, I get the uh, camera set up but this is the uh, the shot I'm looking for I just like the way that the uh, the Sun is coming through with that branch and uh, I'm going to be using the uh, medium telephoto on this it'll be uh, low and it'll be centered on just that little patch of light where the branch is <sighs> All right, I've got this uh, all set up for doing this shot here. I'm just waiting for the sun to come back out to light up the uh, um, bark and uh, moss that's on the, uh, the log. So now it's coming out now. So I'm going to go ahead and set this for a two-second timer. So what we're looking at right now is uh, F-16 at uh, 1 13th of a second. Recheck my focus and we'll go ahead and take our first shot. First shot is going to be a test shot. So I'm looking at my uh, my histogram and everything looks good on that. Um, we're getting uh, more tour, tours of shade but of course that's what you're going to get when you're uh, dealing with taking uh, uh, shots out in the, uh, in the forest. So that looks good. Uh, now I'm just going to uh, wait for the sun to come back out and uh, lighten up that area and then we'll go ahead and take uh, our shot. Like I say, you're just out for a walk and you never know what uh, Mother Nature is going to just uh, put in your path and say, hey, shoot this. So I'm not sure of uh, the bush, but uh, those are some of the, the reddest uh, red berries that I've seen. And you talk about predominantly the colors on this path are, uh, you know, a woodsy brown uh, to foliage green. And then, boom, you've got these uh, bright red uh, berries. Um, I don't know if they're edible or not. I would not uh, be eating them. Um, but it may be something that, uh, you know, birds and other wildlife here uh, may uh, eat on. But uh, so there's our next subject right there. So I've chosen to use the macro lens on this because I'm actually going to try to get right into those uh, berries themselves. Um, now this is... Uh, a dark area so um, I'm gonna uh, use very narrow depth of field on this um, to get in as close to the berry as I can um, and then uh, we'll see how the test print looks uh, whether it's going to require using a tripod or uh, uh, an alternate uh, even light source So again, I'm going to use this wide open. Yeah, still had it on timer, but anyways, that actually gave me a really good uh, histogram. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on it, see how it is. Yeah, the focus is just off because this was at 1 30th of a second and I'm just not able to um, keep it still enough and also you can see a little bit of movement in there so because of the the wind coming through here now 
um, it is uh, moving around a little bit so that's going to uh, play as far as trying to get a uh, nice crisp focus with it. So I've got the macro lens uh, on the uh, camera, we've got the tripod, I've got it set for uh, 6.3 uh, f6.3 and 250 which is the uh, flash sync and I've got the flash set up on the uh, the camera I'm gonna hold it at an angle that's gonna give uh, you know off direct light to the subject and then we're gonna go ahead and click and let's find out what we're looking at as far as our test shot All right, and I'm looking at that, and I'm happy with that. Um, the background is very blurred, and the uh, the berries are red and crisp, and then the flash is giving him a good highlight. So we'll go with, uh, I'm going to try various angles with the flash, and uh, we'll see what we come up with. I'm kind of liking what I see. It's just amazing where you have the light in different areas as far as the catch-all, what you're going to get on the, uh, the red of those berries. I think that's the key.